on behalf of TCS Ion Direct me and my team welcome all of you to this very important session on NEP 2020 the impact on teaching of science the national education policy 2020 outlines the vision of india's new education system the school curricula and pedagogy will equip students with the 21st century skills including essential learning and critical thinking and greater focus will be given on experiential learning students will have increased flexibility and increased choice of subjects there will be no rigid separations between arts and sciences how futuristic it is no rigid separations between curricular and extracurricular activities between vocational and academic streams ever since nep 2020 has been the talk of the town teachers and students are trying to comprehend the impact of this new policy bringing a big shift most educators are of the opinion that the nep is ambitious and futuristic we've been doing sessions on nep on our channel so far and today again we have invited a distinguished expert to talk about nep 2020 and its impact on teaching of science It is great pleasure and with great honor I welcome Dr C K Ghosh who is a passionate educator and a leader with tremendous potential. He has had several important positions. He has held several important positions at IGNU. Conspicuous among them being the Director of Student Support Services and the National Center of Innovations. He was also the nodal officer for the integrated MSc PhD program in physics under IGNU and Institute Indian Institute of Astrophysics collaboration he did his PhD as a scholar of Council of Science and Industrial Research from the Indian Association of the Cultivation of Science he was also the nodal officer of Sakshat the one stop education portal of the MHRD also served as the chairperson of the content advisory group for physics for physics and also of the rajiv gandhi project for edusat supported elementary education dr ghosh has also co-authored 11 books four in the area of physics published by mcgraw hill and the fee learning and the rest of the volumes of did you know you must have heard all of you about it which is a compilation of multiple interesting facts and selected innovations in odl system published by viva books private limited further he has more than 100 publications in the form of papers and articles in national and international journals of repute a very warm welcome to you dr ghosh uh, good evening and greetings to everybody all all of you who have joined this program my uh, heartfelt thanks to tcs for giving me this opportunity to deliberate on uh, this very important topic and share some of my thoughts on it. Pleasure Thank sir. You. Thank you so much. So dear viewers, uh, we want this session to be as interactive as possible. If you have any questions, please share them in the chat box. Also mention your organization's name, your name of course, and the city to help us contextualize the questions. We will take up the most relevant questions during the session. Sir The NEP 2020 talks about significant changes in science education in our country. So, how do you think it will facilitate in achieving the universalization in science at secondary education level? Right. Uh, this is a very very pertinent question. That how it is going to universalize science education. Now, uh, while introducing the topic, in fact. Uh, madam has spelled out very clearly that there are several important features of this policy and constituents among them being the learner centric approach towards education the holistic approach towards education the experiential learning facet of education But there are many more to it within the paucity and the constraints of time let me try to explain these three things let me try to bring home the points learner centricity experiential learning and holistic approach towards education in fact when the education commission for uh, the 
education in the 21st century was built out in Paris in 1996, which had given a direction to education in the entire globe. It was said that let there be a paradigm shift from teaching to learning. Let all our approaches towards teaching learning transaction be more oriented towards the need of the learner than to be delivered directly by the teacher. Now, NEP 2020 is in fact, in a way, an extension of the UNESCO Commission for Education in the 21st century. And another interesting thing in the context of our country is that this UNESCO Commission for Education for the 21st century, and as I told, NEP 2020 as its extension, in fact, echoes the voice of none other than Shami Vivekananda. He said in 1894, see, UNESCO Commission was held in 1996 and now we are in 2021. And what Swamiji felt, felt out in 1894 was something like this. Education is a manifestation of perfection already in man. Education is a manifestation of perfection already in man. So the perfection is already there. And while talking about learner centricity, the commission says, that the theme of the commission is learning the treasure beam. So we'll have to nurture this treasure. This is learner centricity. And there comes the idea of critical thinking. That is, there will be less <coughs> emphasis on the content, less emphasis on the quantity of the content, but there will be more emphasis on the quality of the content and which will center around critical thinking. So this is the learner-centric approach. That is, you trust upon a syllabus, you trust upon a curriculum on a, which is prepared by an expert committee and where there is no student representation. But the students are the end user and they are the learners. So they will be having a say in the curriculum development. This is one feature of learner-centricity. I'll tell how it is going to impact science education. Because of course, in general about every uh, discipline area and then experiential learning now experiential learning takes place throughout our life the name suggests the adjective experiential before learning suggests that it is learning through experience and it is happening all along our life and in case of science in fact uh, i think we will be having a good bit of discussion on laboratory training so i'll elaborate on that but the conduction of a learner within a laboratory is a part of experiential learning. But more than that, what he or she sees every day in and around him or her. Again, uh, I have to fall back on Shami Vivekananda. At one stage, he says that experience is the best teacher. Through that, we learn through minds and tears. And this has a simile in the approach of, in fact, say in junior classes, when we talk about the water cycle. Now in the examination paper, if there is a question on water cycle, we know from our experience from the very childhood that one who can draw a very good diagram that there are ponds from where water is evaporating, cloud is forming, and it is coming back as rain. And it appears to draw a good diagram. Well, Drawing a good diagram is definitely a kind of a virtue. But then, so far as the understanding of rain cycle or water cycle, uh, drawing a diagram is not so important rather than to understand it and feel it. Now, why can't the teacher take the students along by the side of a pond during hard summer and they can show him, show the students that there's hardly any water in the pond and then come monsoon it will get filled with water and where from this water has come. So this is experiential learning. So experiential learning can manifest itself in several ways. And then comes the holistic approach towards education. We'll be making reference to holistic approach time and again. That is, we will be integrating science with several other areas. Now I'm taking you back to the uh, situation when well, the Second World War was knocking at the door. And you know about the great Manhattan Project, which was created for creation of the 
atomic bomb and we know the devastation it had caused on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Now, on one hand, through science, we are reading Einstein's E is equal to MC squared, which is at the base of how mass is converted into energy and how uh, conversion of an elementary quantity of mass releases a tremendous amount of energy. So that is the science. But then you integrate it with the history, history of the nations who were into the war at that particular time. And then history becomes very much relevant along with this theory of uh, atomic bomb and atomic scientists working at the Manhattan, uh, which you will get to a later, I think the most historic letter reaching the White House. Uh, that was on 2nd of August 1939, when Albert Einstein shoots a letter to Franklin D. Delano Roosevelt. Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And these two names are also important because when the Time magazine made a popular poll for who would be the man of century after the turn of the century from the 20th to the 21st century, well, the highest number of votes was polled by Albert Einstein. The second was Franklin Delano Roosevelt. And there is an exchange of letter between these two persons. And just a little digression, but you will definitely enjoy that. The person who came third was none other than Mahatma Gandhi. NEP has not directly talked about science education, but I am taking ideas and particularly I have taken, there can be many more. I have particularly uh, taken few from this experiential learning, learner centricity, and the holistic approach, which is definitely going to give a different shape to science education. Thank you so much, sir. This was a very uh, nice explanation to set the stage. How will the new 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 pedagogy or the curricular structure of school education, how will it impact teaching, especially of the science stream? Right. Now, uh, uh, it has been suggested that the structure, the breakup would be 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4. So the final stage would be 9 to 12 and that is being targeted from age of 14 to 18. And then prior to that, the three preceding four will be from uh, 11 to 14. And then the three, I'm moving backwards, then that three will be from 8 to 11. And the first five, that would be from 2 to 8. Now, all these things were there in the earlier education commissions, in the earlier structure. These were there, but not demarcated so categorically. And then, the element, now I'm coming back to those five years, the initial five years. Now, that, again, is being envisaged to be broken up into two stages. One is from the age of three to five, and then five to eight. Now, the initial stage, the learner will spend in Anganwari or Bal Bhatikas. Now, this Anganwari concept had already been there in our country since 1975. Now, all that this Anganwari is going to provide is going to provide a kind of a platform for integrated development of the child. So, there would be emphasis on nutrition, there would be emphasis on immunization, there would be emphasis on healthcare. And this healthcare again will be in an integrated form. The integrated form of healthcare of the mother and the child. So it may not necessarily mean only the midday meal. It may start with a small breakfast also. And then how to make the breakfast nutritious. So they will be getting this sort of ideas in the Anandari and then in a playful way they will learn because this is linked with the different stages of cognitive development of the child. If you look for the Jean Piaget's theory that at the very early stage it is the sensory motor development 
and for that sensory motor development stage it then a gradual transition to pre preparation stage so that will happen at the anganwadi and then this anganwadi or the balwati tas they will be co located in the pre primary schools what we used to call primary or pre five primary schools these will be co located in the pre primary schools so that again you can see some sort of experiential learning the students getting oriented towards experiential learning and through that experiential learning they will come up with different stages of learning and this will be very much attuned to science like say in mathematics now uh, certain things also uh, occur to my mind because uh, while answering the previous question that the policy is totally against the rote learning now our first i think sort of and and it it has an explanation so i am talking about the different stages at the first stage in the at the pre preparation stage you make them do that uh, and then in the main operational stage you bring in a little bit of algebra when they are in the age group of 8 to 11 you bring in an algebra and again fall back on this that why this had happened and this can be explained with the table of every number 19 18 17 so on and so forth so this particular division and then after doing that uh, operational stage and then coming coming to the formative stage that is uh, when we are going from class 9 to class 12 so here there used to be a break up to class 10 they were studying all subjects as compulsory subjects and after that they were going to the main stream now that is happening from 9 to 12 and then for learning science or for for that matter any particular discipline now again this nep has very much recommended for uh, removing the barriers removing the boundaries between discipline i'll come to that but if you are talking about hard science then to have a decision that whether or not to continue whether or not to pursue physics chemistry mathematics biology and so on or whether to uh, pursue physics chemistry mathematics with history physics chemistry mathematics with economics so that kind of decision you take after you have reached the 5 plus 3 plus 3 stage and then you implement that at the final class course so this is one area and then a great bit of emphasis is being given on early childhood care and education so early childhood care and education uh, education will become a part of pedagogy see we are aware of pre primary training uh, appeared had come in a very big way and everybody is aware of that bachelor of education that is also a kind of thing but then in the pre primary there should be something called early childhood care education and that would be involving all those things which i said and particularly health care will be extremely important because we need to come to a situation which we call era era is an acronym e r a e stands for enrollment r stands for retention and a stands for achievement so if we have been able to universalize education i think this policy has to be implemented to be seen now if we have been able to universalize education then we expect that there would be a hike in enrollment but hike in enrollment is not sufficient this enrolled students will have to be retained in the system and for retaining them in the system it has to be made much more flexible and that flexibility aspect is taken up in the right earnest to early childhood care and education we have a question uh, a relevant question here from nafisa banu nawazuddin uh, from uh, aksara vidya mandir she says can a student choose options in science like only biology or only physics only chemistry right now 
this is a very very pertinent question i must com- compliment uh, madam banu for this question uh, i think what must be going on in her mind is that uh, learning physics and chemistry without mathematics how the student will be able to manage that and or maybe the student has a knack in physics he has a knack in chemistry and biology also but not very much uh, conversant with mathematics not very comfortable with mathematics so can he avoid mathematics and take this up so we will be giving in fact the decision will depend on the aptitude of the student and that will be determined not only by the student but by the guardian by the school authority and there should be provision in the school to do a proper aptitude test and then there should also be some uh, provision for the logistics that whether this kind of a combination can be given but all said and done the most important thing is the onus will be finally on the student because the student is the end user so the onus will be on him and he will be said that it is you who have to manage now he will have to say he will have to be said that these are certain areas in physics which will require hard mathematics and so there you will be feeling handicapped so you prepare yourself accordingly or maybe at that that particular time when you reach that particular stage for your want of knowledge in mathematics you have to do a bridge course so this sort of provision will be there where he does not have to go through the entire curriculum of mathematics but a particular portion of mathematics which is relevant to doing that bit of physics but the onus will be on the student now you cannot just say that onus is on you this onus will come with cognitive development and in order to ensure that this onus comes with the cognitive development we have made this demarcation in fact we have made my task easier by asking this question and that's why we have made this demarcation 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 perhaps i have been able to answer this question so provision will be there provided logistics and other support systems are in place thank you so much sir so i uh, will quickly move to the next question with how important how to improve the lab based science education in the light of nep and this is incidentally a, a question asked by one of the audience subhash samanta from midnapur college first of all first thing which i'd like to tell my audience and i'd like to request them to feel it that science cannot be taught without lab so we have to do the laboratory like i'm drawing an analogy uh, for the last one and a half year or uh, from when this uh, lockdown had started and there has been lot many debates whether or not to hold examination how will evaluation take place now i think it is purely my opinion that the crux of the situation or the bottom line could have been that evaluation has to take place. so how it should take this face to face online what would be the modalities that would be based on that and giving an analogy see about the elections examination of practical how i am not going to explain now i have ideas but that is beyond the scope of this discussion but it can be done and in fact uh, i am a member of an association called indian association of physics teachers and who selects students for the physics solid field to go to the different international forum now of course the first part the first screening selection is done on the basis of theoretical exam but the final selection for final selection they have to appear for practical and that kind of practical examination has even happened during the pandemic i'm uh, i think i'll request pcs to organize a separate program on that how all that happened so coming to the issue of laboratory and uh, this nep 2020 now i did not touch upon the two things Uh, which was there in the issue of holistic approach towards education that is inquiry based learning and discovery based learning so how a student will conduct himself towards this inquiry based learning in order to inquire he has to observe and he has to observe in a laboratory situation and even without a laboratory situation even outside the laboratory even at his home the night sky is a fantastic laboratory provided the sky is clear and it is always open you don't need the laboratory assistant to come and open it it happened once that you had gone to the laboratory and the laboratory assistant was absent and it took a long time for 
some of his substitutes to come and open the lock of the double so you don't need someone to open the lock for the night sky it's a fantastic laboratory so nep 2020 again tells about a natural approach towards learning science it will definitely happen in the laboratory and let it happen in the laboratory with very inexpensive devices there is a technology called low cost devices i'm talking about very very inexpensive and affordable devices let it be there in the laboratory so that the institutions cannot complain about lack of parts lack of infrastructure and so on whatever we have we have to use it properly i have seen that the terror instruments which are rotting at the laboratory so they have to be used to and then as i am telling you about making the teaching of laboratory in a more natural way so we can also think of home based equipment and this can happen even without the pandemic right from 1969 the united kingdom open university and wilton kings have been sending uh, home based kits for doing experiments and we can start this culture the students can keep a small thermometer a small barometer these days they are keeping oximeters also a small balance the uh, cooking gas person comes with the cylinder i can verify that whether the quantity that is written on the body of the cylinder is the same as what i am measuring if i have a balance at home and similarly if i have a multimeter through which we can measure resistance this, this three things only resistance current and voltage and these are available at affordable price so this would be the culture of laboratory which would be an aggregate of what you can have at your home what you can have at your community and what you can have at your school and the greater version of that that is again my suggestion but that is very much in tune with the recommendations of the national education policy that let there be state of the art laboratory but the state of the art laboratory need not be there at every school you have to think of the finance also so let there be state of the art laboratories at the district and let these be used for if not anything else for examination so that examination can be conducted in a uniform manner examination for laboratory and after saying all that i am telling you that if you see the marks in practicals and practicals are done on the basis of assessment done at the school whereas for theoretical i'm again talking about the non pandemic situation and uh, theoretical examination is taking place in that public manner uh, which you see now in practical if someone scoring on an average 50% in theoretical 90% in practical so there is something wrong with the assessment so the state of the art laboratory and there will be regular visits to the state of the art laboratory so that and a student after going from that transition stage what he has done at home what he has done at his community he goes to the state of the art laboratory and a culture of learning science to observation could be developed and that is in view that is a crux of inquiry based learning and discovery based learning in fact i had gone to a school it was for the uh, inspection uh, and then the mathematics teacher perhaps in standard 3 or standard 4 was taking a lesson on measurement of length by metric system so i asked the teacher that what is the status of preparation of the students who said that well they are going to appear for an examination uh, at the end of this week and so they are all prepared i'm taking a revision class so i asked the students what's the relation between a meter and a kilometer all hands got raised up and everybody answered perfectly 1000 meter is equal to 1 kilometer again uh, 100 cm is equal to 1 meter and then that school was situated in the outskirts uh, of a town and actually i was interested to know how the commute day in and day out and in course of knowing that trying to know that i asked them that how far is your home from the school now no hands are getting raised up what is the length of the classroom so hands are getting raised up how many centimeters is my pen so hands are getting raised up. so this is the kind of culture which i expect 
like in a class i had asked that what is the heaviest thing in the class heaviest thing we could see around so they were looking about the desk the blackboard and so on so forth and then i made the calculation that the air within this room if you multiply the length breadth and height to get the volume of the class and multiply that with the density of air it turns out to be the heaviest object in the class so this is a particular culture of laboratory of experiments which we want to do in fact i was talking about the unesco commission for education and i am visualizing the same thing as an extension of that and there it came out with four very important recommendations that there should be four pillars of learning learning to know learning to be learning to do and learning to live together and this particular discovery aspect of the very best aspect is learning to do learning to be is in learning to know learning to do learning to be and learning to live together so this if you can look for uh, strategies for inquiry based learning or discovery based learning you are actually doing justice to this pillar of learning for the people this is uh, thank you important. thank you so that, much such beautiful that, examples that, you have given yes you were saying that would be our approach sir. towards that would be our approach towards laboratory and that again also should be in stages and that would definitely uh, instill confidence in the student they should be they, they should be asked not to be afraid of making mistakes in fact in the laboratory i have seen that there is a culture of having a laboratory notebook now every student is asked to keep that very neat very tidy and they are all doing that very religiously so well i am not i have got nothing i can say let it be maintained very neatly and tidily but not at the cost of scientific honesty and scientific so what happens in the laboratory you know, if you analyze this particular word from the point of view of english grammar laboratory notebook here the word laboratory is adjective to the noun notebook and how does this adjective qualify an adjective qualifies a noun that's what we have learned grammar so this adjective says that the notebook which is used inside the laboratory but that notebook is seldom used inside the what they use inside the laboratory is a, what they call a rough notebook where they take all the data and then they go back home and copy from that first of all copying is a waste of time while because at that time you can do you can do something more than it took and then while copying there is a possibility of making a mistake and the third thing which is crucial there is an irresistible temptation of being selective you know that the data will fall on a straight line graph and you find that out of the 10 data which you have observed with your own eyes five data falls on the straight line five do not and you just you remove those five without taking any thinking so this is completely scientific results and also so in the laboratory we have gone through certain stages and then reached the result and right, most right. of those stages are missed out while uh, actually copying it and there's a there's a very interesting comment from surya lakshmi ji she says laboratory copy is generally filled in the summer vacation not even on the day of the experiment right so so uh, you keep it neat suppose uh, i have taken a data and for some reason or other it is not in order i just make a line to or even i do not make a line so i make a comment that i am retaking this data what is the harm in you are being honest and you are exhibiting your scientific integrity i have seen it is it's very unfortunate that when we see the seasonal uh, during examination they have to present their seasonal work and some marks is allocated for that i have seen the the date of experiment as madam was saying and another thing which we learned from the laboratory is graphical presentation i find students getting bewildered what is graph in fact in the mathematics book there is a chapter on graph or uh, graphical solutions of equations and students generally feel uncomfortable with that but this graphical presentation is one of the most natural present like these days we say that the graph of the affected persons due to covid is getting flattened what is meant by that 
the graphs of different trigonometric functions and how they appear in our life right we say that a the study of graph understanding of graph that can happen is a laboratory and this is the holistic approach where whatever experience you gather from the laboratory spreads out or make inroads into other areas of knowledge other domains so that is how uh, the laboratory teaching is going to be shown. thank you sir so quickly we'll uh, move to the next uh, few important questions uh, we are running out of time here uh, a very important question with respect to nep and sciences the evaluation mechanism how do you envisage the changes to the evaluation mechanism uh, with nep being around right again uh, i bring in the term holistic now normally we are accustomed with end of the term evaluation there is hardly anything like continuous study but evaluation has to be continuous say on the particular day of the examination i may have fever i uh, may not be physically fit so so many things can happen on the day of the exam continuous evaluation is extremely important which in uh, the term of education parlance we say formative evaluation and formative evaluation why there is so much of issue regarding the uh, matter of holding are not holding examination due to the pandemic because continuous evaluation was not in uh, uh, continuation continuous evaluation was not in the process so had it been there we did not have worried so much so first there should be provision for formative as well as summative research and so it has to be like a particular curriculum is prepared uh, with a lot of expert a lot of experts applying their mind to it similarly the process of evaluation will also should emerge and what would be the weightage and then a project component should definitely be there but it is it should not be that project which is available in the market the project will have to be so designed that a student feels inspired to do that project he will not go to the second hand market to buy a project buy a ready made project i'm sorry but i have to make this kind of demand here because project is something which teaches you how to conduct yourself in the real life situation. some students i have seen institutions where uh, they bring a lot of stringency into the project and the stringency not only is in the subject matter area but also in the organization of the project and that stringency is built in order to make the student face certain difficulties because he will have to encounter difficulties in the real life situation and first thing should be to remove all kind of fear psychosis about exam examination should not be taken in a playful manner it should be taken in a serious manner but without any fear like <clears throat> several provisions should be made so that the student does not feel intimidated the first thing is intimidation how i will do this project why you should feel inspired to do this project so it should be have it should have four components the formative component of the evaluation the summative component of the charmant evaluation the project component the practical component and a grand viva involving project and practice so this should be the five things but what would be the breakup and this breakup need not be uniform we always fall into the trap of making things uniform it would vary from subject to subject and depending on the nature of the subject depending on the nature of transaction of the subject the breakup has to be okay sir so uh, a very interesting question uh, has come up from santosh karki ji and uh, the question is can you provide a few tips on innovating teaching science innovative teaching of science on the online platform in today's situation right in fact the entire business of online teaching is an innovation is an exercise in innovation now first of all uh, 
let me talk about the situation now this online teaching has become a kind of a compulsion and online teaching it came up all of a sudden like i worked in local university and we had been advocating first of all is not just the teacher being replicated the teacher whatever the teacher had been doing in the chalk and talk mode now he or she is doing the same thing uh, in uh, computer screen no now, that is one part now of course the pressure of completing the syllabus and all those things were there and th- see this is where the nep 2020 becomes so relevant not pressure on the content but pressure on critical thinking like when uh, there was loss of teaching hours due to this pandemic well syllabi were cut down why to cut down the syllabus syllabus has been created by expert committee uh, after days of deliberation and then in one stroke you are cutting that down 30% of the syllabus cut down how does what does it mean you don't cut down any part of the syllabus you cut you strategize the transaction mechanism in a different way to transact the syllabus in a different way. and this different way of transacting the syllabus can be done to the online you can bring powerpoint presentation you can bring oer online education education you can you can bring open access resources you can built in a whole lot of of course this would require uh, definitely announcement of the digital infrastructure that this needs the kind of preparation but i am uh, answering the question of uh, shantoshi by uh, thinking that those kind of infrastructure are in place uh, some exercise from the point of view of finances and planning have to be done then a total learning management system uh, i had uh, coordinated shakshat as you heard the one stop education center so you have to prepare a complete learning management system and a learning management system has to be in place to allow the inroads from open education resources from open access and of course you have to be very careful about using such resources which does not attract uh, copyright violations and then uh, also you have interactive audio interactive video and interactive satellite based education the one area of uh, online education suppose there is problem of bandwidth uh, and i always wish that this problem will definitely be solved with days to come and i hope that but and the functionaries are taking adequate steps to avoid giving this bandwidth problem but when it is satellite based education suppose the dish can see the satellite then signals will be beaming down to that dish so we can use the satellite based education you heard that i was a part of the rajiv gandhi project for edu sets of the elementary education and then we had organized a satellite based teaching at different villages particularly in madhya pradesh and chhattisgarh so this again can be integrated in online So online teaching is an aggregate of a learning management system and a robust web conferencing platform. And through that, you can pick and choose the best possible things and deliver it to your learner. And that would be the best kind of innovation. And side, like say you are teaching an experiment in science, so you can uh, prepare a small video. You can prepare a small video and uh, present it to the school. And it will be great if you do it yourself. There are many videos available. You can again, uh, which does not attract copyright violation. You can just uh, upload it while you do your teaching. But uh, you can bring in all such things. Say through audio. Audio can be a great supplement. Say you dramatize. You dramatize the dialogue between. Uh, 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 you, you, are, you are taking a course of that structure. You dramatize the dialogue play. between brother Ford and his Ford. Somebody, some role play. Somebody playing the role of Ernst, brother Ford. Somebody playing the role of his Ford. And this sort of things can be brought in to the online. 
Thank you, uh, thank you so much, sir. We've already uh, crossed more than fifty-six minutes here. Uh, so uh, oh, we sorry. have we have so many questions. No, the we are still getting you know uh, rained with questions. Uh, we have so many questions on uh, assessment methods and uh, summative assessment tools and all of those. So uh, to the audience, just want to let you know that we are holding multiple webinars on all these topics. do watch out for our invites for every webinar we are trying to send you uh, send you the invites do watch watch out for them and you can get your answers in subsequent uh, webinars as we do okay but for now i think we've gained uh, so much of knowledge from dr kosh and i am sure that there is much more to gain here but since uh, there is paucity of time and uh, we should be closing uh, now uh, within 2 minutes sir if you could explain what is the uh, how all higher education institutes like iits since they will become multidisciplinary so uh, there will be greater inclusion of uh, you know arts and humanities subjects for science students also and vice versa so any closing remarks along with this answer sir we can decide that is going to happen sometime in 2040 so uh, i am little worried about the logistics how the logistics could happen but then Yes, field work has already taken place. This is what I can say through the choice-based credit system. The CBCS system is already in place, and through that CBCS system, you can take multidisciplinary subjects. So, uh, but I am most worried about the logistics. That how the IIT is. Uh, I have spent a lot of time at IIT Kharagpur. In fact, how they are going to involve teachers from different disciplines so again. This online mode, and now the online mode not really for a pandemic, but as a requirement to rope in the best kind of experts will come in. Like IITs have been doing through NPTEL, National Portal for Technology and Learning. So uh, this sort of things will have to be in place to integrate different areas of knowledge. I gave some examples at the very beginning that how the uh, nuclear physics or atomic physics can be integrated. With history, or say how an expert in architecture will going to prepare a dam, uh, will take care of the uh, possible migration of people, possible social factors, economic factors, and so on and so forth. And uh, but I am not, I am not confused. But what I feel that it's a daunting task, and it should happen again uh, with the view to have a holistic approach. Our situation and logistics that very will be managed uh, using the digital means. This is my take on this multidisciplinary study at IIT is an idea, but it need a lot. Of Thank you, sir. We'll. Uh, uh, I think we uh, by audience demand we may have to do another session. We will definitely turn around a way to do that, specifically on higher education. Maybe we can do one session separately. uh for now audience thank you so much for engaging with us so well and uh, i hope that you have got uh, answers to most of your questions even if i have not named you uh through you know through the questions asked by other people and anyway the questions that we have put up to dr ghosh uh i hope the new education policy will do good to the country it is going to bring the holistic flexible multidisciplinary uh twist to the education here and uh, the 2030 sustainable goals are supposed to be met with this uh, the intent of the policy seems to be ideal in many ways but it is the implementation where the key to success lies thank you so much dr ghosh uh, and uh, uh, thank you so much for the time that you have taken the effort that you put to answer most of the questions that have been asked uh, by us and uh, we hope to see you again here uh, before we leave thank you, uh, thank you sir so before thank we leave very participants much. i have another uh, uh, request to you you will see a feedback survey at the end of this webinar do uh, fill that and on the chat window i have pasted the link of our channel where we have hosted so many of such videos Uh, Dr. Ghosh's video is also there. The previous uh, video where he uh, spoke about MOOC system, uh, that video is also there. If you want, just go and visit there. Uh, just uh, 
play with the channel uh, site and the videos are also available on youtube uh, where you can just uh, search for tcs ion direct and you should be able to see so many such videos uh, thank you so much for engaging engaging with us dr ghosh thank you very much and i shall look forward to such opportunities because indeed the privilege for me to be there and i once again